Welcome to TradeTheMBA.com. This is John's report for the 29th of January. Well, Monday produced a, well, not a whole lot of anything, but it did fulfill uh, some critical elements, which was the retrace of a, a lot of positive extremes that we had on the intra uh, day charts. Uh, so, from that standpoint, did what it was supposed to. You know, within this softening shakeout and stuff, um, not a whole lot to be overly concerned about with this degree of rising gold. Um, or as we call it, uh, dark brown in the programming, but it looks gold, so we kind of call it that. Um, and as it rises, um, what we're looking for is where it would start to flatten out. Uh, that would be your beginning. So in that initial up spat, it's when it gets a little bit flat. And in this case, we're in a second run of it. So quite a significant uh, length of time for uh, the current bull press as you want to say and mostly for the most part just a 50% retrace from the original dip coming back um, and that's all uh, nothing too poignant uh, as much as you might hear all sorts of drama about it here it shows clearly on the Nasdaq that double wave action and a lot of times you can just follow it with the yellow staying above magenta here it had broken down but broke down just as we were getting Azure starting to rise and that whole setup, so kind of negated it. Uh, the rising Euro certainly is helping keep things in a stable press mode, and then that push of gold is an indication that people are terrified about something uh, all over the place. It's been a steady rise. We went into our little flat period, but it's uh, sort of restored itself now. So turning to our 5K chart, we had the, well, early targets of 43, 38 from, well, going back into this previous run-up. If we scroll back, we can take a look at what that looked like. So we had that big, giant spike, and then it all began with some positive extremes all the way through here, and then boom, went, and then we produced our peak up here at the 66 region left that short the entire day going into the weekend and we opened up lower and as we were talking about we had all those target ranges to 43 then to 38 and as we cascaded in the pre-market right down to them piece of cake and then boom uh, filled those and we was putting I would put it on the chat um, the interesting configuration that we tend to look at a lot, though, in these kind of uh, decline setups, well, where's the reversal going to be? And I kind of talked about that briefly on the Skype chat, but I thought I'd mention it again one more time just to give you a little clarity on that setup. Let me expand the chart just a little bit here so you can get a close-up. Now, often you'll see this configuration, which is where you've had a, uh, well, the cleaner version right here would be where you have the dramatic drop off, orange is coming from the top and closes. And it's usually that peak distance between cyan and green that starts to narrow that becomes the clue. Likewise, you get the similar situation with um, orange to red as the gap between them, the spread, as I like to call it, narrows. But you can utilize that similar situation when we have the shakeout that's in the deep red. Um, the first thing I look for is crossover of my gold above um, magenta shakeout. At the same time, I'm having orange below red. And at this particular juncture, I then begin to look at the spread and I'm looking for the magenta 9 number to be about two and a half points above the yellow number. And so that happens, well, in this particular case, doesn't really happen right here. So not really a possibility. And guess what? Price fails. But then we move over a few more bars and then finally we get it. The only problem is we get our two and a half at a point where we're positive extreme. It's with the yellow dots letting us know, hey. So 
what I'm thinking at this particular point is, okay, I'm going to dip of the fill of it. That becomes an interesting buy setup at that particular point, which would be the lows down at the 32 range. Okay, so then it's just a matter of waiting for uh, that return setup to take place again. Uh, happens a little bit further up. Um, it even begins somewhere in between here, but you know, this becomes one of those where you've got still some more of those positive extremes when you're at the lows and you're making new lows, which is always an interesting one. Um, and I prefer to capture the momentum of things on the upswing. Uh, finally turns around, uh, I started posting uh, as it was moving there. And then we yeah, made it all the way back up to the algo, um, right at the 38. And that was a spot in my mind to start looking to take gains right near the 50% marker, particularly with this week as this um, DOC red. And this is another one to look for. When I don't get moves that are, you know, strong enough to get back up over or to zero, um, you know you've got a lot of weakness built into that configuration. And so and once it starts to taper off, oftentimes you'll get a second opportunity to exit on a move back up, even if there is a dip. Um, it's just typically the way the market works kind of reverts back to those means. And um, I love these setups because they become great opportunities whenever I get a short signal and I have this week a setup, when I get that orange bounce with the crossover and a short snake, it's like, okay, you know, I'm looking for a nice move. The only problem you got with this case is when that steel crosses back above that cyan, you always got to look for a little bit of a pop action in there. And sure enough, it did that. And then likewise, when it crosses below, yeah, you got a strong action going lower in this case works for you in a lot of ways because you also had green going, you had cyan crossing green. I mean, these are all failure markers right at one time. And guess at what level? Right around the same 33 that originally triggered this. And that drove us down to uh, the lows at the close, which were down to 23-ish. Uh, and then we ended up with the dark red that produced the exact same construct that I was just referring to this time without the um, positive extreme and here you can see it so it started out we were at uh, well just under a point right there uh, minus 14 to minus 13 and here minus 14 to minus 10 now I used the full um, four points so as soon as my spread reduces to less than four points I'm concerned. So right here, I'm down to under three and a half. So I'm looking at this thing. I got under three and a half and I got a clean spread of cyan going above. All right, well, maybe it's time to think about taking a gain right there. Just so happens to be at 50%. Not a bad uh, logic. Sure, but um, it's something to, to weigh when you're looking at these because that to me just becomes a warning point after I've had a little bit of a run. If I've got multiple contracts, certainly take one uh, at that particular game knowing that I've got to re-enter on a move back up because oftentimes what you get on this is the first move and then the 50% retrace. Uh, and depending on how significant that move is, uh, you don't know when that first 50% retrace is going to take place. This one was a little bit more severe. Oftentimes what you get is like this one where it comes down touches the magenta but still stays above and keeps it intact um, and at this particular point though the first thing I'd be looking for is do I have a rise in gold or azure and in this case no so definitely you would want to take advantage of that one now you produce a new bicon uh, with the dip of orange literally right back at the same spot uh, and in this particular case, it becomes more interesting because you get the positive extreme just as you get gold coming into the setup, which is the rising gold right here. And so even with some of this uh, modest confusion, I'm not really excited too much about shorting into the rising gold or azure unless it's like some really profound uh, breakdown signal. Um, as we flatten out, that becomes much more attractive. And so when we start to get some of these shorts, they become much more interesting, 
particularly right there because they're below that zero point still unable to get over it. It did briefly for a point right over here. Um, and sure enough, it breaks down. We'll expand it up a little bit so it's easier to see. So that's kind of some of the thought process that goes into it. And again, here's that beautiful configuration. The classic red dipping. You get your peak move right there. And then once you start to see that closure taking place, for me, once I get my orange dipping below the 7.5, I'm looking for any dips to prepare for cover point simply because I can kind of see the handwritings on the wall at that particular point once the momentum gets there. Sometimes they'll reverse before you get below the red, so it's one of those where I'm still waiting for the confirmation. You get the crossover right at the same time. If this were below the negative 13, you'd probably have to wait one more bar for right here when you get a spread that's, well, 13 minus the 1085, so it's just slightly under, uh, and then you produce positive extremes, so easy to wait on that one for the retrace of it. And it did, came all the way back to it, uh, much more improved spread ratio right there, and um, that's where we're currently at. So, it's amazing how functional that can be. But it's a good one to look at, particularly when we're talking about super oversold, which is what we're really looking at when we're talking about that dip below the uh, red area. So I just thought I'd point it out. I'm actually going to create a little program derivative uh, for it so that I can adjust the colors when that uh, criteria takes place. So you'll see it on the shakeout coloring ahead of time. Maybe that'll make it even easier. So. Um, add that to the list. I know I'm still working with the um, 50k adjustment. What we're well, this is not the best one to show because that's the follow through. The idea being is the signal comes in and then at the key points it um, begins to monitor and check the uh, readings as it goes. And it's complicated when it gets into the programming for the follow. So, working through those details one by one, and it's just easier to isolate the long setups and go through what you would do with each of those under various considerations. So, you have your pop up warning signs with the steel crossing over, in this particular case, uh, the sign under red, which is still always you know your long setup and then of course the DOC spreads and where you're at in relation to the zero with the red on and on you know there's so many variables that uh, including them all it takes up a lot of time and a lot of room but we're getting there sooner or later we'll have it all put together for you anyway just uh, wanted to uh, point out some of those little extras um, but as always, I will put up uh, relevant uh, elements on the Skype chat, and we'll talk to you later. Trick well.